How's it going, boys? My name is Schlatt, and welcome back to Inbox, the show that's about financial literacy, I guess. A lot of people saw the last episode of the show and uh, and were very interested in getting to learn a little bit more about investing. And who am I to say no? You know, I, I'm a YouTuber. I know all about this stuff. So, uh, hey, I figured I'd bring on a friend of mine, a good YouTuber friend, FitMC, who is a Minecraft YouTuber, actually. And I know that occupation might not be, you know, the first one that comes to mind when you think of, hey, you know, Schlatt's bringing on someone to talk about finance, but uh, he's great. One of the first conversations we actually had at TwitchCon was about this kind of stuff. So I, I, I trust him to, to give us some good advice. And uh, here's our conversation. Enjoy. But so say I'm 18 or, or younger even, and I'm in high school or college working part-time, and I got a bit of money saved up, but, but like nothing crazy. What should I do with that? Why is it not the best idea to just keep it, keep it in a savings account? Well, you don't want to just put everything into a bank account because when you have a lot of money and you just keep it in your bank account it actually loses value over time because of inflation so any savings that you have that you don't need for your you know direct needs you're definitely going to want to put it in the market because then it's going to gain value over time and it's not going to be the victim of inflation right you know? so with inflation your money has less value over time and a lot of the savings accounts that banks offer won't necessarily give you a, a good enough interest rate or APY, as they call it, to beat the rate of inflation. Right. Like, say you're a high schooler and you worked your butt off all of high school and you got $10,000 in the bank. Well, if you just let it sit there for five years, it's not going to be worth 10000 anymore after five years is up, you know? Yeah. And I always remember being younger and seeing these uh, financial videos pop up in my recommended from time to time. And I'd, I'd watch them and I'd think to myself, yeah, I should probably do that. You know, that's this is good advice. This is something I should get started in. But I never did. It, it, investment always seemed like, like, to, like too complicated or, or almost overwhelming to me. But, dude, once I actually made an account... And realized how fucking easy it is. It's like, yeah. <laughs> like, like making an account on Robinhood or, or a site like Vanguard or Fidelity. It, it, it takes minutes. Say we set up an account fit. We transfer some money into it. What's the smartest thing to start investing in right off the bat? Yeah, I know the market seems like a really scary thing. So let's just assume you don't know anything about the stock market or investing or finance or anything. You don't. I'm just going to assume you know nothing. Uh huh. Let's say you are a student and you show up to class and the teacher gives you two options. He says you can either work your ass off and really study and you might get an A or I can give you a B just for showing up. That second option, getting a B just for showing up, that is an index fund. So you can invest in something called an index fund where instead of buying the stock of a company like Apple or Google, Instead, you're buying a little bit of the top 500 companies or the top 1,000 companies in the stock market. So that way, if one of those companies fails, you still have all the others that keep you propped up. Right. So instead of saying, you know, I'm going all in on Apple and putting all your money into that, that one stock, you can put your money into an ETF uh, or an exchange traded fund, which tracks a bunch of different companies, usually in like the same sector, right? That way you get the diversification, which is always good. And you get that security against a single stock in there, maybe not doing so hot. Exactly. Like the old saying, like, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Mm -hmm. If you buy an index fund, your eggs are in 500 baskets. So like, yeah. it's perfect. But when I, uh, before I was a full-time YouTuber, you know, I was a school teacher and I actually, a few years ago, I read a book called The Millionaire Teacher by Andrew Hallam. And it was about this guy who was a school teacher living paycheck to paycheck in his early 20s. And he decided he had enough. So he just took his finance seriously. He made a lot of sacrifices to live like a minimalistic lifestyle. And then sure enough, in his 30s, he retired from teaching as a millionaire. And I, re I read this book and like it had a huge impact on me and the way I see finance because when my early 20s, I didn't give a shit about finance. You know, I was just in college. I was partying, bagging ass, all that stuff. And I just... When I got older, I realized, oh, wait a minute, you know, here I finally have something on the side. I have my YouTube channel. It's starting to earn me a little bit of money. Now is the perfect time for me to invest. And after I read this book, I'm like, I know exactly what I need to do. And that's what got me turned on to index funds. Like they're just, they're an amazing resource to just the most basic of investors. 
So what's a good, and I know we, we probably have to say like this, this isn't financial advice or anything like that, but what's a good place to get started with ETFs? Where's a good jumping off point? One of my favorite ETFs right now is through Vanguard, VU, V-O-O. -O. Mm -hmm. It's a really simple index fund. It just gives you a little piece of the top 500 companies. Uh, VTI is another good one that I think is a little bit cheaper. So if you have a little less starting cash, VTI is probably a better call for you. But uh, those are the two that I would highly recommend if you are just getting into investing. Like you can just buy VU and you're going to make money no matter what, given enough time. Yeah, VOO tracks the S&P 500. And uh, like I said in the last video, annual rate of return on the on the S&P 500 in the past 90 some odd years has been almost 10%. Uh huh. 10% a year, like just with your money sitting there. It really is that fucking easy. Yeah. It is. <laughs> and that's the thing. It's like nobody, nobody does it. Nobody cared about this stuff when I was younger. Even still today, a lot of the people around me who have the money to invest it are like, they don't care about it. It's just a thing they'll worry about when they get older, when, when now is the absolute best time to start. Exactly. You know, it's like, do we really want to be stuck behind a desk for 35 years or do we want to like, take like the later part of our 30s or 40s in fact schlatt you're investing so early i you if you really wanted to you could probably retire in your early 30s you know Ooh. and just still i mean yeah if you nice. just keep going at the rate you're going <laughs> man. <be> nice yeah. <laughs> you know it, yeah it's just one of those things we're buying time right now by us buying into the market buying these super safe options we're buying time for ourselves later in life that we don't have to spend working mm -hmm. Another thing I mentioned in the last video were Roth IRAs. Uh, could you touch a bit on uh, what Roth IRAs are, or what IRAs are in general, uh, and why they could be beneficial? So an IRA is a, is a retirement account. It's an investment account where as you put money into it, you know, and as you continue putting money into it, it's going to grow, it's going to grow. But then once you turn age 60, you can start withdrawing from that account and you will not be taxed on it. See, mm -hmm. if you just have a regular investment account, whenever you sell your stock or sell your index funds and you earn a profit of any kind, you're going to have to pay capital gains tax on that. So let's say you withdrew $100,000. Well, they might charge you 10 to 20,000 in taxes on that. Yeah. So, and it all depends on your state and you know what your local regulations are but generally if it's an ira and you're over the age of 60 if you were to take out a hundred thousand dollars you're going to get a hundred thousand dollars right so that's just one of those things where if you know that you're not going to touch the money until retirement an ira is useful but otherwise you can still just use a normal investment account and then just take the tax penalty just knowing that you can use that money whenever you need it if like there's like an emergency or something it's one of those things that it's best to start early with because, you know, 50 years of compounded growth is going to leave you with some pretty serious money. Um, any words of wisdom for us and parting advice? I mean, a lot of young people, they make the mistake of buying into conspicuous consumption. So buying things for the sheer purpose of showing them off. And if you want to actually make smart financial choices, you shouldn't purchase things just to show them off. Like the average American millionaire, it's like Schlatt, if you had to guess, how much money do you think the average American millionaire spends on a vehicle? Uh, based on how you set up this question, I'd assume they're buying like, you know, 2005 beaters for, for like, <laughs> for like 5,000 bucks. The average millionaire in America spends $40,000 on a new vehicle. I know people that are living paycheck to paycheck that paid more than that for their car. Yeah. So the way I see it, why would you pay more money than a millionaire for your vehicle if you're not a millionaire? There's a lot of choices you can make in life that will set you up for future financial success. It's more important to build wealth rather than to look wealthy right now, mm -hmm. I think is a good way to put it. You know, and also just little choices here and there that can save you money in the long run that can help you invest now. Like, for example, instead of eating out so much, like learning to cook for yourself, you save so much money doing that. And that money that you save, you can put it into the market and it's going to yeah, make man. you even more money. The fucking like, you know, at, gets me so bad. <laughs> it's almost addicting because once you start earning money through investing, you're like, oh, wait a minute. The more I make, the easier it is to make more. It snowballs. 
And then you understand like how given enough time, a lot of these people can just accumulate all this wealth. It's because just through smart choices over time, it snowballs, you know. I guess the last but, question fit is uh, does money buy happiness? I'm going to go ahead and say yes, it does. Ooh. And not in the sense that money itself does. It's a, that's, a, that's a controversial take. I know. When you have financial independence, it leads to happiness. When I don't have to worry about paying bills or putting food on my table or worrying about if I'm going to be able to afford this month's rent, when those variables are taken out of your life, you instantly become happier. Yeah. So I would argue that money does buy happiness to an extent. Right. So I guess a better way to put it would be not that money can like buy happiness per se, but money can be used to reduce the amount of stress around you. Right. Ben, I appreciate you coming on, man. A lot of good stuff in here. I think this was a, uh, a pretty helpful conversation. Yeah, thanks for having me, Schlatt. You know, it's always good you and I talking. You know, I mean, we didn't, we went this whole time without mentioning Schlatt coin. We you know? <laughs> Fuck, you really, had to, you really had to do that to me. I'm sorry, I just had to bring it up. All right, well, well I'm gonna <laughs> hang up on you now. <laughs> right, thanks, thanks, thanks a lot, Schlatt. Yeah, see you, man.